Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm gonna try and bring back wrap ups. I've started being asked by like a ton of people to do more reviews or more vlogs or wrap ups just because I talk about a lot of books on my channel. I talk about what's coming out, the books that I bought, and I know that I don't really talk about the books that I read and give you like my actual thoughts on a lot of those books. And that was mainly because I read a lot. Like I read, I'll admit I read way more than like the average person every single month. So doing wrap ups started to get very overwhelming for me because I generally read between 20 and 30 books a month and it's very hard to talk about that many books and do them justice and give you my like full thoughts on them in a reasonable length video. So I started doing reading vlogs, but that started to become like an obligation and it started to be not as much fun because I don't feel like picking up the camera every single day. Um, so I'm not gonna say that I'm not gonna do reading vlogs anymore because I still do like doing them and I know you guys like seeing like more into my life than just like this background. Speaking of which, do you like my desk chair? I felt like sitting. I felt like being cozy with you. I have my TBR cart that I can fill as I talk about books that I read. Um, I just kind of wanted this to be more of a relaxed video and less of like a structured review video, if that makes sense. So that being said, I figured this would be a good month to kind of start getting back into the swing of doing reviews or wrap ups for you guys, just because October was a weird month for me. Um, because a lot of you guys are just kind of chiming in now. Just in case you didn't know, um, I got very, very sick in the middle of October and I ended up being admitted to the hospital and having appendicitis. So I got my appendix removed in the middle of October, which kind of put a little bit of a hindrance on my reading and just my life in general. So I figured this would be a good month to kind of segue back into doing wrap ups because I read like half of what I normally read because I had a solid two weeks of just sleeping. So that being said, I want to get into the books that I read in October, which was, I believe it came out to being 13 books, which I know is still a lot of books for most people. I understand that. But five of those, I didn't read Tower of Dawn. So five of those um, were a reread of the Throne of Glass books, like the whole series, just to get me up to the release of Kingdom of Ash. So I'm not gonna talk about any of those in this video. We all know that I love Sarah J Mass books and everybody already kind of has opinions on those books. So I'm not gonna discuss those. I'm going to talk about the other books that I read. And I had a pretty good month. Most of the books I believe were four or five star reads for me. So it was a good month, even though it was a limited month. So. I've been talking forever. That was enough intro. Let's get into the books. So the first book that I read in October was Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nong. I received this arc um, early, like probably late spring, early summer, and I was determined to read this before it released on the 23rd of October and mission accomplished. I did that. This book was phenomenal. I gave it four stars. The only thing that kept it from being a five star book for me was that it was somewhat predictable. Um, like there was nothing in the plot that like really threw me or like I couldn't see coming. That being said, there is nothing wrong with this book. This book was so well done. It is own voices, Asian inspired fantasy that deals with some hard hitting topics and it has female female romance in it. It just has all of the things that get me excited about a book coming out. So in this book we are following Lei or Lai I said Lei in my head the whole time, who is a girl who belongs in the paper cast in the society that she lives in. And being in the paper cast means that you are kind of the lowest tier of person, I guess you could say. In the society, there are three different caste systems. There is the paper cast, which are essentially just the humans who have no sort of like magical power or ability or anything different about them. Um, the next tier up is the steel cast. And this is kind of a cast of people who are somewhat hybrids of a human and a beast. And that beast form can kind of be any sort of animal. So these people generally have some animalistic traits. They might have like cat eyes or antlers or a tail or scales, something that is like animalistic about them. And they have some powers that came with those traits. And then there is the moon cast, which is like the top tier of society. And these are kind of full beast human hybrid things, as in they are kind of a in full beast form. Like they are have a full coat of fur or scales or like they essentially are just like upright humans who 
look like animals, if that makes sense. But they have a lot of magical abilities and powers. In this world, there is a king who rules the kingdom, and every single year there are eight girls who get selected from across the lands to be his paper girls. And these girls, their role is essentially just to be his own personal harem. They are kind of concubines to him, and it is an honor to play that role because you get to live a very lavish lifestyle in the Hidden Palace, and you get to do a lot of things that you wouldn't otherwise get to do elsewhere in the kingdom, but you also have to sleep with the king whenever he demands it. There's a lot of, like, content warnings that come along with that that deals with consent and rape and sexual abuse and things along that line, so if those are things that are triggering for you, just be wary about the story. Um, but we are following Lei because she ends up getting selected to be the ninth paper girl because she was born with golden eyes and a general in the army or a commander in the army um, tracks her down and basically rips her away from her family and brings her to be this extra paper girl um, because he's trying to kind of redeem himself over something that happened between him and the king a couple years ago and he thinks that if he can present her as a gift to the king he will be right in the eyes of the king again. And it follows Lei's story as she is like trying to navigate this lavish lifestyle that she has no part of. She's been in the paper cast her entire life and has no idea how to navigate acting like a lady and doing etiquette classes and things like that, but she also really really struggles with the fact that she is kind of forced to have sex with the king and all of the issues that follow that, including the most precious female-female relationship between paper girls. That's all I'm gonna say about this book. I highly recommend checking this book out. Okay, moving on to the second book, which is I think my favorite book that I read in the entire month of October, and it's a book that I feel like it just got swept under the rug with a whole bunch of other releases that came out, and that book is Give the Dark My Love by Beth Revis. This is going to make my top list of the year. I think this book was phenomenal, and I haven't seen anybody talking about it. So this book is about alchemy and necromancy and plagues and fantasy. It was just... Okay, so this book, I'm going to admit, is definitely not for everybody. It's a slower-paced story. It's fantasy, but in my opinion, it almost reads similarly to historical fiction because in this fantasy land we're dealing with a plague, like an illness that is just wiping out the society. And just kind of the setting and the atmosphere of this fantasy land feels old-timey. And I personally don't read historical fiction that much. I'm not drawn to it. This was so good. Like, I can't recommend this book enough to a lot of people. So it's a slower-paced story about a girl who basically comes from a very small town that is steadily getting taken over by this plague that is just killing people. It's a very gruesome disease. The story basically starts with her going off to study medicine and alchemy at this academy so that she can become a doctor and use this alchemy that she learns to help uh, cure the plague and save her people. But when she gets there, she kind of realizes that she's out of place. She's there on scholarship, and everybody who is there is kind of an important somebody um, who is overprivileged and doesn't really care about the well-being of the rest of the lands other than the rich. So she feels very out of place, but she's extremely talented and studies her butt off and kind of gets taken under this professor's wing who really thinks that she has something and really thinks that she can make a difference in the world. So he starts to give her special lessons of different forms of medicinal alchemy so that she can help cure this plague. It was so good. Okay, so that's the basic plot synopsis. And if that didn't intrigue you enough, there's a lot of you sickos out there like me. This is a very morally ambiguous story. We follow a lot of characters that we think are on like the righteous path but as the story goes, their morals start to kind of wobble, and we just kind of start to see some characters descent into, like, the dark side, which I love reading about that. I also really appreciated that there is a romance in this book, but one, it is not the forefront of the story. It doesn't affect the plot in any way. It's kind of just, like, a background thing, and it's not affecting our main character. We are following a girl as our protagonist, and this small romance that happens in it in no way affects her views or her role in the story, and I just really appreciated that. Okay, so if I didn't sell you on this enough, this is one of those books, like I said, it's a slow burn type of story, but I kind of wavered between four and five stars the entire time I was reading it. I loved the story, but it wasn't 
quite hitting the five star mark until like the very last line of this book. I just went, oh, five stars. It has an ending that I always love seeing in a book. Like, I'm not gonna spoil it in any way, but a lot of you guys have similar reading taste to me because I know you guys have told me that. This is your type of story. Just trust me on that. The only content warnings that I have for this one is that there is a lot of gruesome uh, medical scenes that happen in this. So it gets pretty gory for some of the scenes, but it's all handled in like a medical atmosphere. So it's not just kind of like gruesome, unnecessary warfare or things like that. Like it's a lot of surgical scenes. So if that's something that kind of grosses you out, maybe stay away from this. Give it a try, but see what happens. The next book that I picked up was Sadie, and this book was so good. I'm sure a ton of you guys have already heard a lot about this book because it has been going around booktube like crazy, but I gave this four stars. I think that it was a very impactful and very important and really different story that we don't really see in YA. So this book is basically following the story of a girl who goes missing after a really brutal murder of her little sister and you kind of get the vibes that she is on the run and trying to hunt down the person who murdered her sister. But there's a lot of like ambiguity when it comes to like what actually happened and you're figuring out what happened as she does as the story progresses. But what was unique about this story is that the chapters alternate between the story of what happens and it's not necessarily in chronological order, but um, you see the story as it happens because people who are involved in that specific scene are being interviewed for a podcast because a guy who does a local podcast about missing girls picks up Sadie's story and kind of tries to backtrack and find out what happened to her. So that's the basic plot of the story and I feel like this was such an important story to read and it deals a lot with very real statistics of girls who go missing and are never found and their stories as to what could have happened to them. I gave this four stars. I flew through it in one sitting. I highly recommend checking this out if that at all sounds interesting to you. Trigger warnings for this one. Um, sexual consent and abuse and rape issues and also obviously we're dealing with some gruesome missing people slash murder type concepts. But this book just, it packed a punch. It was very impactful. So I gave this four stars. I highly recommend it if that's at all interesting to you. Next book that I got to was I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. And this was the first book that I buddy read with a bunch of my friends on Instagram. And I think a bunch of you guys actually read with us for all of our thrillers that we read throughout the month of October. This is a nonfiction story about the Golden State Killer. And Oh man. Okay, so I've read true crime. I watch a lot of true crime shows because I'm just a weird person. I understand that. Um, this one skeeved me out because, like, in case you guys weren't following the whole story, this guy actually just got caught. Like, this past year, early in the spring, they finally were able to use, like, DNA traces and actually found out who he was, like, 30 years after the fact. So reading all of the things that he did and how he went about it in very graphic detail was quite unpleasant. But oh my god, the story was so gripping. I ended up giving it four stars just because it was kind of hard to follow because all of the stories and each of the individual cases that were discussed in this weren't told chronologically. So it was kind of hard to follow the timeline of the story. But the amount of information that Michelle McNamara packed into this book was just astounding. Like, I don't know how somebody could be like that invested in something that they weren't a part of, but oh my gosh, she dedicated her entire life to tracking down this serial rapist and murderer. And the information was just like, astounding the amount that she had in here okay that was repetitive so i gave this four stars if you guys are interested in true crime stuff this is definitely one to pick up because it read so fluidly highly recommend next book i picked up was our third thriller that we did for friday fright athon and that is if we were villains by ml rio um i unfortunately missed our second one because that's when i was in the hospital and not very human so I got caught back up on our third one, and this was another five-star read for me. This book was phenomenal. I can't even express how impressed I was with the writing in this. This book and this writing style gets compared to Donna Tartt and The Secret History 
quite often, and that is kind of top tier modern literature in this day and age, and I completely agree with that. So this is following a group of students who are at a Shakespearean um, conservatory type of college. They're all in their fourth and final year as theater students in this conservatory that is kind of, it's almost cult-like with how intense the theater program is. Like, these kids dedicate their entire lives to Shakespearean writing and plays and acting. Like, they talk in Shakespearean verse constantly. We are following present day as one of these students, like, years later, is being released from jail because he was accused of murdering one of his fellow friends in this conservatory back when they were in school together. So we are following dual timelines between him being interviewed by a journalist trying to kind of uncover whether he actually was the murderer or not, and then we are jumping back to their time when they were at the school and following the story until those timelines converge and we find out what happens. I have never fallen in love with the writing or the characters faster than I have in this book. This honestly doesn't sound like a type of story that I would be interested in. I just did it as the buddy read with everyone else and I am so glad that I did because this book was phenomenal. I adored every single character. The character development that was in this was just so good. I can't sing this book's praises enough. I know I'm not doing the plot justice because, like I said, when I read the back of this, it didn't really sound like something I would be interested in, but trust me, this is a five-star read. I highly recommend it. Next book that I want to talk about was another phenomenal book. I had a really good reading month, and that is The Beast is an Animal by, I still don't know, Petternell von Arsdale? Not sure. This book Okay, so I picked this book up specifically to read in October because it, it looks very ominous as far as like a spooky Halloween type read, and that is very true. I was not let down by that. But I also have heard rumors that this is being optioned to be turned into a movie, so I wanted to read it prior to that happening. I don't know if that's actually going to happen or not, but there's a potential there of a movie. This is a book that I pick up almost every time I'm in the store just because of the cover, so I finally got around to reading it, I actually listened to it, and I am so glad that I did. This book was so good. This book was unlike anything I've ever read before, and the language in it was just beautiful. Like, I- it's so good. I'm gonna throw this in the category of, like, Maggie Steve Otter, Lainey Taylor, Seanan McGuire, kind of one of those very lyrical, whimsical, completely out of the blue type of stories. Like, it's not going to follow any sort of plot line that you're used to when reading YA, or I would almost even consider this middle grade or adult. It's kind of one of those, like, timeless type of stories where um, we just happen to be dealing with a younger protagonist, but honestly, I feel like this could appeal to any age range, which I personally think that that makes this stand out as, like, a really outstanding piece of just literature in general. So, this is following Alice, and our protagonist is actually a child. Like, she has a very juvenile mindset that we are reading from. But when she was younger, she basically couldn't sleep one night and wandered out into the woods and ran into the Soul Eaters, which are these twin sisters who live in this forest and eat souls. Um, and in this forest, there is also a beast and we don't really know what the beast is other than he is just this terrifying entity that her whole village of people is terrified of. So one night she wanders out into this forest and meets these soul eaters and they kind of talk to her for a little bit and say that she is different and that they will come back for her and that she does not deserve to have her soul eaten. She ends up wandering back towards her village and runs into a guy who is on his way there to try and sell goods and he gives her a ride back and for some reason she starts to get weird vibes and he ends up taking her back to her home and escorting her inside because she seems scared and for good right because every single adult in her village has died. So this newcomer who escorted her back into this town with the hopes of trading um, kind of takes it upon himself and try and figure out what to do with all the remaining children because all of the children in this village just heavily slept through this crazy mass murder that happened. So they all mo get moved to this new town along with Alice and the plot goes from there. I feel like what really stands out about this is the writing. The writing is very dark fairy tale. Like, I don't know how else to describe it other than it's it's not quite, I wouldn't describe it as whimsical because it's not like pleasant. 
it's very dark and eerie, but it reads like a dark fairy tale, like an old school Grimm's fairy tale. And it was just such a cool reading experience. So if you guys are like me and you've picked this up a ton of times or it's been on your bookshelf for years, pick it up. Like seriously, it's so good. So I gave this one four stars. And the last book that I want to talk about in this video is the last thriller that we read for the Friday Fright-a-thon, and that is the newest Riley Sager book, which is The Last Time I Lied. This one, I liked it a lot more than Final Girls. I didn't... Final Girls was not super memorable to me, which I liked the setting of this one a lot. This is an adult thriller that takes place at a summer camp. So basically, we are following a woman who, when she was a young teenager, she went to the summer camp, and the three other girls that stayed in her cabin with her went missing, and they were never found. The camp got shut down after that, and is being reopened, and she got offered a position to come and teach art at this from the owner and, like, director of this camp, because she thinks it'll be kind of a healing experience for this woman to come back and kind of, like, face her fears and kind of try and get closure of what happened to her as a young teenager because she still doesn't know what happened to her friends. So the story of this book is just kind of her unraveling what happened and trying to find clues at the property that this whole thing went down at and her finding closure over the whole situation. So I ultimately gave this three stars. I, I think because this just kind of fell in the standard genre of thriller where once you read it, you've kind of read it and that's it. Like, it's not going to be a story that is going to stay with me, but I will say the epilogue in this threw me. Like, I was all for the story. I liked the setting. It kind of was fun. It was a fun, enjoyable read. And then we hit the epilogue and there was a huge plot twist that just kind of left you hanging. And I, I honestly love endings like that, especially for thrillers when you think you have everything figured out and then, like, the last sentence drops and you're like, what? just happened. It's one of those. So was this the most memorable thriller I've ever read? Not really. But I feel like that one plot twist at the very end kind of makes it worth reading. So those are my thoughts on this one. So these are the books that I read in the month of October that I wanted to talk about. So I feel like it was a fairly uh, productive reading month considering that I was a zombie for half of it. If you guys have read any of these books, let me know down in the comments what you thought of them or if any of these are interesting to you, let me know if you're going to pick them up. So that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing my thoughts on some of the books that I've read recently, and I'll see you in my next video.